I just want to say what an extreme honor it is to just to be up here and to teach. Um, yeah, and thank you, Rosemary, for stretching us students in this way. It's been really fun to watch um, Rebecca and Jacob. Uh, and yes, it's been exciting prepping this. Um, I think it was last Saturday, Rosemary, as she was encouraging us to prepare open pulpits and sermons, mentioned that uh, public speaking is one of the you know, worldwide biggest uh, fears, way up there, yes. And uh, yeah, that was a huge hurdle for me um, th through the years. Uh, and, and so I like that you mentioned that. Um, and I think on Saturday, Joanne had told Rosemary, you know, she used to be terrified. And you know, Rosemary wondered if anybody remembered the moment when they pushed past that, that moment of terrified and just did it in, in spite of. And I remember one of those moments um, when I got up in an open pole, but I don't know how old I was, maybe 14 or so. And it was just, I, it was very stre stressful. I think my voice changed to the point where I, it sounded like I was crying when I wasn't. And so the response afterwards was, you know, a lot of sympathy, like, and, and people saying, thank you, thank you so much for, for doing that. And that, at the time, I was so disappointed in myself. You know, people don't, probably don't even remember what I was talking about, you know, because of this distraction. And I realized, I realize now, looking back at it, someone saying thank you for me going up there in spite of me being afraid could be a message on its own. And so, you know, in obviously, um, you know, things have changed from then. And I think, I, you know, I could have said at the moment, this, this is not for me, <laughs> this is not my thing. You know, because it probably wasn't at the, at the time in the flesh. Um, so I just want to start by saying thank y'all uh, for your encouragement and seeing past that. And thanks, thank you to my teacher, mentor, for um, instructing, admonishing, encouraging in total love, because um, that made a huge difference. You know, sometimes when we hear a critique of ourselves, our immediate res you know, response sometimes is we failed. <laughs> And um, I think that when you have the love of Christ in you and you give any sort of admonition to anybody, um, it's really a good picture of the Father's love for us because he sees something inside of us that maybe we're not confident in at all at the, mo at the time or that maybe we don't see at all or maybe we don't even want to be. Um, but he will guide us uh, give us direction, give us uh, critiques, and we can hear him do that to us sometimes. So I um, just want to start by saying to thank you to all of you. Um, so speaking of the Lord freeing us, freeing uh, from fear was one thing. I want to talk about freedom today, inspired by the book of Romans, which is one of the books we're studying this month. And... Uh, uh, freedom from the law means we love righteousness. And in Romans, um, I'm going to start with chapter 7, verses 4 and 6. It says, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that ye may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. So I, don't, I must not have been paying enough attention the last time I read this chapter because when I read we're at work in members to bear fruit for death, I thought, what does that mean? Bearing fruit for death. And when we read in, uh, when we go to the next passage, that'll give us a little bit of a hint. But here in the same verse, it says, while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law. So I'm, I'm wondering here too also, how the law is what tells us what's good and what's not good to do. So how is the law 
causing our sinful passions to be aroused. What's going on? And uh, I think what we realize if we, as we continue reading the entire book of Romans is that Paul you know, is, is sharing with us that the shortcomings of the system of the law, what it was, uh, were not caused by the law itself or by the Lord who gave us this law. It's, it, were, it was caused by the old nature and the old nature's inter, uh, you know, connection with the law, interaction with that. So um, if we keep, read further down in the chapter, uh, chapter 7 still, this is verses 15 through 20. For I do not understand my own actions. I do not do what I want. I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it's good. Now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want. The evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now I do what I do not want. It is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So us bearing the fruit for death, uh, it, it's not, it's us not being able to fulfill the law in our old nature. So that's what that means. The only way that we're able to bear fruit for God is when we're walking in that new nature. Um, there's a song that is part of one of my core memories from when I used to listen to my parents' WOW CDs. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else my age did that, but um, it's called Why, Big Daddy Weave. Uh, sings it, uh, the chorus, I'll read the chorus in the second verse. Why do I do the things that I do when I want to do what is right? Change this wicked heart of mine. Let me walk with you in the new life. So what will ever put an end to my recurring bout with sin? It seems I'm always at a loss for a way to win. When what I really need to do is to confront it with the truth, let your words of life sink in and make my mind brand new, a transformation that happens over time is the product of a renewed mind. So until we take up that new nature, this cycle of always doing what we don't want to do, not doing the things we want to do, is not going to be broken. And even now, as we have that new nature, there might be times where we think we're stuck in a cycle of, oh, we, I don't, I'm not doing the things I want to do. But at it, it, this time, it's not hopeless. It's not endless. Because it's going to get easier if we are taking on the new nature. And if we are, if our heart, as you know, it says our, we're given um, a fl heart of flesh. Our stony heart is taken away. So our heart is softened. And that will cause us to learn to love righteousness. So we now love the thing that is so hard to do sometimes. But the more we love it, the easier it is to, gonna be to do that thing. Uh, things will get brighter till the full day. The path of the righteous is brighter till the full day. So it's not hopeless like it was before. Another aspect of freedom that I recognized as I was studying was that freedom does not mean uh, whatever you want, doing whatever you want. Um, I, as I was reading these verses, I thought of the verse. Uh, it's in Galatians chapter 1, 13 through 14. And it says, You are called to freedom, brothers. Only don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so, me and Dylan bought a house recently, most of you know. And, you know, I always like to watch home reno shows and would plan out different things, look through magazines. So it's been in my mind to do certain things for a while. And Dylan is the kind of person that um, doesn't care <laughs> as much. And he, but he also genuinely cares about what I want. So he, when he says whatever you want, it's not, it's not you know, it's, it's genuine. He means that. So... I'm, you know, planning, even before we bought a house, thinking of various things, he'll, he would ask me, oh, have you thought about what you're going to do for this? I'm, I'm thinking, well, I, I've been thought of that for, for years, you know. So, um, you know, with colors, he's, he's colorblind, but also even if he wasn't, I don't think he has too much interest in those kinds of things. So I'm here thinking I could 
this is like a dream come true. I can, I can do whatever I want. I've got all the, he doesn't care what choice I make. You know, I'll just, I, you know, I can, I can do whatever. And um, now that we've got a house, we were working on painting. We're still working on painting. And um, as far as color, you know, Dylan really didn't care about the color, but he wanted there to be an accent color so that it wasn't all one color. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, it's such a, it's a smaller house. It's got enough going on in the front. I just want it to be all one color. And he was um, not budging on this <laughs> thing that he wanted. And I, you know, I, he didn't care what color it was, but as long as there was some contrast, you know, some, and, I, and I'm like, Ugh. and then I got my spoiled little self got an attitude saying, you know, I thought you didn't care. I thought I could do whatever I want, you know, and so I'm using this naughty, you know, but um, so that I, it helped me realize, first of all, that there's someone else involved here. Yeah. And I'll, I mean, ultimately, I'm, I mean, we're doing the thing that he, that, um, he wants to do. But what I want to share about is our relationship with the Lord. We might not always realize that the choices we're making are not aligned in, with his will. Um, you know, we could, we might hear a still small voice telling us not to go here. You know, maybe we were planning on going somewhere and he says, you know, stay here. And you're like, oh, well, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do that. I wanted to see those people. You might hear, um, you might get a new kind of conviction about something that you've been doing for a while, and uh, you're now getting convicted about it. And you're like, ah, oh, I didn't even know that that was, gosh, against your, what you wanted. Um, you might hear a sermon, you know, God might speak to you through someone else, and you hear something that you've never heard before. And, you know, you, you research it, you go and read in the Word what's true about it, and you find out what God's heart really is. And so, you know, here after... Dylan told me what he wanted to do. I thought about it more. I asked him more about it, and I, you know, did some research, too, to see what it might look like. And now, over time, even though ultimately, you know, he, he's my head, so I'm going to do what, what he says, but now I want the same thing that he wants. So there was a change there, and now we have a unified... We have peace, but we have, a, yes, we have a unified uh, desire, and we both want to see the same, the same thing. So, yes, and that does bring peace. Um, and so the, our same, it's the same thing with the Lord. If, if we start seeing his heart, and we get really an idea of what he wants and what he sees, which is always going to be the better thing, and it's always going to be the right thing, we can be on the same page with the Lord. We can want what he wants and have the same uh, desires that he has. That's part of that new, new nature that we've been given. And another aspect of that is that we should always have a working relationship with the Lord. It's a, um, you know, he recognize his uh, headship over us, but also recognize that he knows best so it's a two-party system. He, he has authority, but he also knows what's best, and he wants what's best for us, and he loves us. So we can totally trust in whatever, even if we have questions about it. There can be a total trust in there. Um, another thing is that if, if I make a bad choice, if, if I did make a bad choice, who would I come to to try to fix the result of my bad choice? You know, Jesus, yes, and, and he's going to be there when we do that. He's going to be there to help us fix it. But it just proves that even if I wanted to do something all by myself or try to do it by myself, I'm, we're not as independent as we think we are <laughs> or as, that, as we want to be. You know, we, we want to do things ourselves, but the Lord he is constantly reminding us that, that we can't. You know, if I had totally... Um, botched the paint job, you know, Dylan would come and he'd help fix it. He'd, he'd you know, get, buy new paint, cover up the old one. You know, that's, the, that's what the Lord would do for us if we make a mistake. But how much better if we go in 
doing what he's asked us to do, and he's made it clear that he, what he wants from us. Um, and, you know, the Lord, obviously, he's, we're always going to have a head. Until, as we walk through this life, we're always going to have someone um, that we have to answer to. And we need to be ready and willing for the answer, whatever it is, whatever it's going to be. Um, and then another part of freedom that, that I wanted to zone in on was freedom comes when we recognize the sin that's keeping us bound and when we recognize that what we're doing is sin and then when a moment comes when we are maybe tempted with that and then we don't have it anymore. That is beautiful feeling. That is freedom. I just this week had a moment when... Um, you know, I was experiencing something or looking at something, and I had a feeling I didn't know what it was at the time. I just felt sad when I should have been happy. And I, w I kept thinking about what my, my past and what I didn't have. And the Lord showed me that the feeling that I was having in this moment was jealousy. And I was just shook by that. I thought, you know, I met something I never thought that I struggled with before, and my, I was just heartbroken that, that I was feeling this way. And I said, Lord, help me. And then it, was, it wasn't, but maybe a day or two later that I was looking at the same thing. And I felt nothing but joy. Just, just total joy. The sad feeling was, was all gone. What I thought was just sadness, which actually was, was, was jealousy. And it was totally gone. And, um, you know, it was, it was something, I mean, God has done that with, with many other sins, I think, in, in all of our lives where we have a moment of, wow, this isn't happening anymore, and it used to happen. But for me, in this moment, it was a very recent discovery, you know. At some, but who knows how long maybe I had been sinning in that way, and I didn't even realize what it was. You know, so when God reveals things to us, he's also faithful as we come with a broken heart, which he loves and he will not despise, then we can receive that freedom. It says in, um, it says in Psalm 139, 23 to, through 24, uh, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the life everlasting. So that's what that's the way to freedom, is asking the Lord to search us, know our hearts, try me. And during that trying time, there, you know, that might not be very fun um, or very pretty, um, but we want to be tried in order to, to find out what we need to change because that's when freedom comes. Know my thoughts. He already knows our thoughts, uh, but when he... When we recognize what we're thinking in a new way, then he'll give, um, give us healing. Um, and then Romans 8, which is something we read from today, uh, verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. death. So the Spirit is what gives us the life. So the new nature is comes from the Spirit, and that's what's giving us life. Christ Jesus uh, has made it, the law of sin and death is what, what we were stuck in before, and before Jesus came. Um, but the law of sin and death, so the law itself is not what's causing sin and death, but our old nature cannot fulfill it the way we want to. We need the law of the Spirit. We need the new nature of Christ. Does anybody at this point have any comments or questions they'd like to take? Karen? I just appreciate your last example because I had this relationship with my mom that was so bad. Like I was controlling and we would fight. I mean, literally fight, like yell at each other in my house. It was really bad. And I finally, nobody was home and I just screamed, God, I need to change. 
Today I spent the day with her. We laughed, we joked, we went to her shed, yes, and or her, her storage unit again. But it wasn't that burden at all yeah. that had been that her storage unit. She calls okay. it shed, I get confused. <laughs> no, no, no. It was her storage unit. We go there a lot. But it was not that thing where I was just wanting to criticize yeah. him. You know, it was that's, it was like gone. And I was like, Lord, that was such a huge thing. So when you share that, that mm -hmm. is the power that, that you're is. talking about. That Amen. going, God, something's got to change, I guess it's yes. me. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Yes, it's that crying out to him. That's what does it. Amen. <laughs> Screaming out to him, whatever it takes, right? Oh, the path of the righteous is light, the light of dawn to shine brighter, brighter and brighter. Oh, the path of the righteous is light, like the light of dawn to shine brighter, brighter to the full day, brighter to the full day, brighter to the full day. Oh, the path. Of us righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter, brighter and brighter. Oh, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter, brighter till the full day, brighter till the full day, brighter till the full day. If you were to take Leonard and go west, you'll bump into Spring Lake, go right, find a main street, go left, and you can get there just in time for the sunset. <laughs> it's a beautiful night. That would be a gift for some people if you choose to do that anyway. No, what you shared was strong and powerful and obviously well thought out, and I appreciate the fact that you did a lot of self-declosures um, illustrating and the very fact that we can come to God with our, our problems. And, and I liked your emphasis on when we're broken, he loves that. He wants to fix everything. He wants to buy that new paint and, and fix up our, our mess. He likes that because he wants, he's daddy. Dad's like that. Dad likes kids coming to him with <laughs> tears and a broken toy, and by the time he's done, he's fixing it, and he's the hero, and there's love all around, you know? God is, God likes that. And I appreciated that emphasis of our dependence on him. Like and I said, sure. there's liberation in that. Just give it, just let him show us. And if he shows us something, you know good and well, you prayed that prayer 10 years ago, and there's stuff he didn't show you because you weren't ready for it. So he's not going to show you something unless you're ready to, he's not going to crush you. So we should never fear going to our father saying, check me out, Lord. You know, and he'll give you what you need at that time. And if you keep that attitude, you go from glory to glory. Change my heart, oh God. Mm -hmm. Make, Make it, it ever, ever true. Change, Change my heart, heart, oh God. May I be like you. For you are the potter. I am the clay, mold me and make me, this is what I pray, change my heart, oh God, make it ever true, change my heart. Oh God, may I be like you. And the part where it says he's the potter and we're the clay, Thank you, Lord. Uh, none of us like to get on that spinning wheel or water splashed in our face, so to speak, or crushed and <laughs> moved built. around, but <laughs> we will never become a beautiful vessel. Until, until we're willing we to allow the master potter yeah. to take over our life. Humble ourselves. Never get to the place where you're so proud that we can't learn from one another, which Christ through us, either, either one, will be the crushing sometime and molding. It won't be always, it will be the Lord through us. But never get to the place where you think 
we have it all together and, and there's no changing, don't yeah. need any changing yeah. or uh, become a beautiful vessel. How many like people that is just beautiful, like this lady, a beautiful spirit beautiful. all the time, her mama, mm -hmm. her, just a spinning, spinning yeah. spirit of her mama and her daddy. Just people that you can find that are steady, they're steady, they're steady. Faithful, faithful. They're not one way one time and selfish the next time, but they're steady. Hallelujah, and Richard's I appreciate that. Richard's a case that. In, his, in his self. He's got oh. these slightly rough, rough edges, and we've been iron on iron from time to time. But <laughs> if he senses anybody feels bad, he's got that same welling up eyes with tears yep. thing. You immediately sure know his heart is all mm -hmm. over you. He's mm -hmm. extremely loving. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we're all different. I like sometimes to talk to somebody that's that's got the straight up facts up. given to me I, mm -hmm. I can deal with that every mm -hmm. now and then those straight up can hurt for whatever reason you sure. just you know but I mean he is so quick to go beyond whatever it is and grab the heart connection Amen. instead of dwelling on whatever it was that there was a little wrinkle or whatever I mean everybody's different I used to feel bad when he'd say oh, you got to the point we sang that song you are so gentle because so, he's like why aren't you gentle like so and so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not I make messes I'm in the kitchen there's a mess I try <laughs> to say something that doesn't always come out right you get the meaning but it's not always flavored with a lot of you know what I'm saying. You know me, so I don't even have to explain. And I hear the word gentle and get hurt just hearing it. And it's the fruit of the Spirit, for crying out loud. Amen. You know? But then we have to think, you know, I'm in this body with size 12 shoes. And when I walk, if you live beneath me, you're, you're going to be sad you moved in beneath me. <laughs> you know, and you know, the apartment. I'm just saying, we're, every one of us is different. And every one of us are that instrument in God's hand to walk in the Spirit best we can with what we got to work with. So nobody yeah. needs to feel bad that you're not this sweet yeah. little angel like this little girl that can be beautiful without any makeup. <laughs> and better, I'm not jealous. You better quit or the sun's going to be down. No, actually.